Hello, my name is Elias Kellner from the Medical Physics Group at the University Medical Center Freiburg. In this talk, I'm going to present our methods for removing the Gibbs ringing artifact in MRI images, which was recently published in MRM. This talk has a rather illustrative character. If you want to know more about the technical details, please check out our paper. So what is the Gibbs ringing artifact? In MRI, images are not taken directly, but they are reconstructed from measurement in the Fourier domain. However, we cannot acquire the infinite Fourier space, but only parts of it, and we have to reconstruct the image from this bounded domain. So a quadratic bounding box results in a sync-like point spread function, and this can be seen as an oscillation artifact in the vicinity of sharp edges and peaks in the reconstructed image. To simplify things, let's first look at a very simple object in one dimension, a simple delta peak. In the Fourier domain, this is represented by a monochromatic frequency of infinite length. If we reconstruct the object from a bounded box of this wave, we end up with an image with oscillations where you clearly can see the sync-like shape of the point spread function. What you often hear is that the oscillation occurs because in order to reconstruct sharp edges and objects we need to have all the high frequencies which are missing in this case. However, this is not the full story. The ringing will always be there, even if we increase the box size. It will always have the periodicity of one voxel. What is more important is how the edge is actually located with respect to the sampling grid. In order to illustrate this, we are going to introduce small spatial shifts in image space which you can see in this animation. The shifts are generated by multiplication with a phase ramp in Fourier space, indicated by the blue line here, which effectively changes the frequency in Fourier domain. With this, we actually move the peak away, so for a better illustration, we compensate for the shift and move the grid in the, into the opposite direction, such that the edge stays where it is, but the grid is shifted this time. Of course, both views are complementary. This one has advantages for illustration purposes. Now, what you see is that there is a situation where the ringing disappears. This is the case when the peak is directly located at a grid point, because then we sample the underlying sync function directly at the zero crossings. The correspondence in Fourier space is the following. If the peak is in image space is on a grid point, the frequency in Fourier space will be one of the higher harmonics of the base wavelengths of the box size, so it will fit periodically into the box. So the object can be reconstructed by just this one basis function, the overlap with all the other basis functions will be zero, and we have a sim single peak in image space. If the frequency differs from that, and does not periodically fit into the box, the orthogonality is lost and we need all the other frequencies as well in order to approximate the wave, even though there is a monochromatic wave with just one single frequency. These non-zero coefficients built up the ringing in image space. This fact is almost simple textbook knowledge, but understanding it this way is one of the basic ideas of our method. Because now we see that we can simply remove the artifact by introducing an optimized subvoxel shift. The only thing is that we have to correct for the introduced shift of the grid by an interpolation step. I will come back to that later. Of course, in the real world, we are not only faced with simple delta peaks. The next complicated object might be an edge. Even though the situation in case space here is not so intuitive, the concept also works. In this example with the edge, you can see that there is an ideal position of the edge where there is almost no ringing. In this case, it is not on a grid point, but right in between the middle of two points. So with the same approach, we can remove that ringing artifact for edges also. The next level of complication is a multiple of different edges. The animation shows that the different edges have their own optimal shift, which means we cannot use one global shift for the whole image. To solve this situation, we are going to iterate over all pixel points and optimize them independently. Let's for example look at this blue pixel at the original grid down there. Now we browse through, all, through the whole set of generated shifted images as illustrated in this animation and we concentrate only at this blue point. For all shifts, now we measure the ringing using some kernel sensitive to oscillations, for example, the sum of absolute differences in the neighborhood. 
because the edges themselves also contribute to the sum, we introduced two features here. First, we measure the oscillations to both sides individually and take the smaller value of the two. So in a sense, we are always looking away from the edge, such that we are not disturbed by the edge itself. Second, we calculate the oscillations in a given range only, defined by a start and end point, such that the edges close to each other do not interfere so much. With the starting point set to zero, we might or might not exclude the center point itself from the summation. This gives the method two per or rather three parameters, the neighborhood range and the number of shifts. We saw that the value of 30 should be sufficient for the number of shifts. Finally, we select the image with the least oscillations. Now, because the image or the grid, depending on how you look at it, was shifted, we have to compensate for that. Therefore, we take the optimal image at the shifted grid and we calculate the value of our current pixel by interpolating the optimal image which lives on the shifted grid. One can use any order of interpolation. In our experience, we saw that linear interpolation does a sufficiently good job here. So if we do this process for each pixel individually, the artifact can nicely be removed with almost no smoothing of the edges, as you can see here. So now let's go to the two-dimensional case. The extension to 2D is not simple and straightforward. Let's have a look at this object with strong Gibbs ringing which shows a checkerboard-like pattern. For each pixel, ringing contributions come from both directions, vertical and horizontal. In general, there is no simultaneous optimal shift. The reason is that for diagon diagonal edges, a shift in one direction also changes the location of the edge in the other direction. In a sense, diagonal edges couple the two dimensions, and in general, there is no optimal simultaneous solution. You might want to stop the presentation at this point and think of this problem on your own looking at the close-ups here. The solution we came up with is the following. Somehow we have to remove the artifact in both directions separately and then combine the results. So we take the original image and feed it into two pathways, one for the vertical and one for the horizontal direction. In both of the pathways, we first apply something you might want to understand as a weighting filter, having a satellite structure in Fourier space, as illustrated. With these, the ringing is filtered in one direction and enhanced in the other direction. After that, the ringing can nicely and cleanly be removed in that direction, as the contribution from the other direction was taken out with a filter. After that, both images of the two pathways are combined again as a sum, and we get a very nice result with rings removed, but the edges are preserved. The great thing with these filter pairs is that even though they seem rather strong, their combined effect is only subtle. The reason is that they are normalized to one in a sense that if you add them, they give the identity. So if they are applied to a pathway without any ringing, they will simply not change the image. And here come some results of the real life. This is a diffusion weighted EPI sequence acquired at a 3 Tesla device with very strong gradients. You can clearly see the ringing artifact in the B0 image at the neighborhood of the sharp edges, for example, around CSF. The method removes them while preserving the edges. The ringing is even stronger in the calculated ADC. The reason is that during calculation, images with different B values are mixed and they have a different contrast and therefore a different amount of ringing. Note that the unringed ADC map on the right side was not applied to the ADC image on the left, but to the diffusion weighted images before and then calculated from the corrected series. You can see that with the method, the artifact has almost completely vanished. This example emphasizes again the importance of ringing removal in processed quantitative maps, which are calculated from different contrasts. The situation is even worse in calculation of higher order diffusion measurements such as kurtosis. We do not show these here, but you get the idea. It should also be noted that the method cannot remove ringing artifacts in partial Fourier acquisitions. The concept was built on the assumption of having symmetric case-based data. So with partial Fourier together with zero filling, it can sometimes even be hard to identify the artifact as such. The oscillation length is now larger than one pixel. For example, have a look directly behind the ventricles here. 
The artifact might even be misunderstood as a feature there. The proposed method will leave this artifact almost untouched in partial Fourier direction and remove it in the other direction, which was acquired symmetrical in k-space. Last but not least, we would also like to present an example from a structured T2 weighted image. You can see the strong artifacts around the CSF and around the lesions. As you can see, the method removes the artifact almost completely with minimal smoothing. The small sharp objects are almost left untouched. So to summarize, with the proposed method, Gibbs ringing can be removed in a very robust fashion. That means you cannot overdrive the method by a wrong choice of parameters. You could even apply it several times after the first run, the image will almost remain the same. It can be understood as a surgical, minimal invasive operation. The method acts only at the ringing and tries to keep the noise untouched. And it's reasonably fast and therefore can be directly applied in a clinical setting. The source code of our implementation is free and open source and can directly be downloaded at this link. If you want to implement it into your toolboxes, just go ahead. If you have any questions or remarks, of course, do not hesitate to contact us. So, thanks for watching and happy unringing!